Hey guys, welcome to History Behind the Warrior, and today we're going to be talking about Charlie Nash. Now, Charlie had a very strong sense of justice at a young age, and after studying for many years, he went into the Air Force, where he would come up with his own unique fighting style, including sonic booms, sonic scythes, and flash kicks. Now, whilst working at the Air Force, he noticed a lot of connections to Shadowloo, as he saw his fellow officers pushing drugs during their service, and when he reported this issue to his superiors, they simply swept it under the rug. Realising how powerful the grasp of Shadowloo was over the Air force, he'd pursue after justice as a lone wolf. Now whilst trying to do this, he would come into contact with Chun Li. She became a very valuable ally for him on his mission. Now at some point during his pursuit for justice, he'd come across a Shadowloo base and save a man by the name of Abel. Now just before the events of Alpha 2, he would be approached by a man named Guile who was interested in training with him as he was intrigued with his style of fighting. So he would in fact train Guile and teach him how to use the sonic boom. But Guile lacked the ability of having a relaxed motion. So this in turn of affect his training as he was only able to cast the sonic boom with two hands. Now Charlie's relationship with Gaal would become a lot stronger and he'd be less like a student and more like a friend, having Gaal follow him for his pursuit of justice. One day Charlie was able to track down a very strong lead to Shadowloo. During his pursuit he would encounter Relento who would attempt to stop him, but Charlie was more than capable of defeating him. Now eventually he was able to track down Bison to Brazil, and when he finally confronted the dictator he would actually be shot from behind by a helicopter belonging to the Air Force. Bison would laugh in his face as he punched a hole in his chest and left him to plummet to his death at the bottom of a waterfall. Now I know Charlie appears in Street Fighter Alpha 3, but his appearance in it has actually officially been retconned. Now Gaul used Charlie's death as fuel for the fire, and this essentially became the main reason he fights against Shadowloo, wanting to avenge his friend's death and pursuing after justice, just like he did. Now before Charlie's return in Street Fighter 5, he would make countless appearances in spin-offs of the Street Fighter games and have a semi-canon comic about him, called The Life and Death of Charlie Nash. Now although it's semi-canon, I do encourage readers to actually go and purchase this because it is a really really good book. And it does take very minor influences from outside games, such as Agent Shadow. Now during the events of Street Fighter V, Charlie would return. With the assistance of the Illuminati, he was revived, but was now more or less their puppet. Due to what happened to him just before he had died, Nash's reconstruction surgery was quite horrific, having large portions of his body replaced with green grafted on flesh. Now, during his comatized state before he awoke, he had a dream where he was attacked by the Aztec warrior Nakali, but did awake and was helped to his feet by Helen, in which he would then see a hologram version of Bison. Realising what Bison had done to him, he would lash out at the hologram, brutally beating it. But Charlie had not been able to recuperate all of his strength. The hologram would then grin at him before disintegrating. After being helped to his feet by Helen once more, and told him that if he wanted Bison, then he'd have to do a few things for her first, and that was to acquire a chess piece that would allow Bison to gain the ultimate power. But the catch of this was was that the chess piece was in the possession of Guile. During his confrontation with Guile, he was able to learn that he could in fact absorb energy. And after stealing the chess piece from Guile, he would rendezvous with Helen, who would unite her team consisting of Nash, Jury, Rashid and herself. Now as they were discussing battle plans, the person who had planned everything, Urian, would arrive. As Urian was the one to give Nash the thumbs up for his revival, he would challenge Nash to a battle and defeat him. Urian was most likely going to kill Nash until Rashid stepped in. Now after Urian's departure, Helen would talk with Nash, learning that he'd in fact not been able to control all of his abilities. She would then empower the gem in his forehead, granting him more power and allowing him to drain energy a lot easier. Now when they enter the Shadowloo base, he is still determined to kill Bison. Now during a brief conversation with Rashid, Nash reveals that he's in fact given up his pursuit for justice and reveals that sometimes by doing things outside of the box, then you can truly be doing the right thing. Now Nash does in fact fight Bison, but he is quick defeated due to the cycle power generator fueling Bison's life force, making him incredibly powerful. Nash is able to escape due to Nikali's interference, and with the help of Rashid, he is able to escape the facility. Now, during their escape, they are chased by Nikali, and Nash is helped onto the helicopter by his friend Guile. Now later at the Kanzuki household, Gao and Nash are attacked by a crazed Abel, who is currently under the influence of Psycho Power. With the ability now to drain Psycho Energy, he releases Abel from his madness. Now when he regroups with Helen once more, he gets into an argument with Helen, telling her that Bison is far too powerful for him to destroy. Helen is furious at him, 
tells him that he doesn't have that long of a lifespan and the only reason he's still alive now is in order to kill him. But Charlie tells her that he no longer cares and simply walks away. Charlie does appear during the final assault against Shadowloo, appearing alongside Gao, Ryu and Chun-Li, and makes his final stand against Bison. The battle is extremely back and forth, and just when Charlie gets the upper hand and is about to attack Bison, he is impaled through his chest. Knowing that he doesn't have much time left, Nash would place his hand on Bison's chest, absorbing and disrupting the psycho energy within him. This would cause a massive explosion which in turn killed Nash, but Bison did survive. Although in the end Bison had won, Nash had in fact chipped away at his armour, making him extremely weak giving Ryu the opportunity he needed to finally destroy Bison. And now Nash can finally rest in peace. And that's really it for Nash. There's a lot I want to say about him and the Shadows Fall DLC, but I believe that deserves to be in like its own separate video. But overall, I was extremely happy to talk about Nash. And thank you to those who gave me enough time to get this all sorted out. As I do know, this video has come out like a week late. And there's lots of stuff going on in my personal life which might involve moving. So that may unfortunately affect uploads in the future. Now as always guys, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.